So what we're going to look at in today's lecture is we're going to look at horizontal shear stresses. Now we're going to see these when we have a prismatic beam that is carrying some kind of transverse load. And everything that we've done up before, especially making shear and moment diagrams, that shear force that we're dealing with would be the vertical shear. So now we're going to look at the horizontal shear. And let's, let's put that together. So let's look at some random beam. And it really doesn't matter what it looks like because we're going to break it down. And so if I've got a beam here, and I'm going to simply support it, and then I'm going to add a lot of crazy things to it. So we've got a couple of concentrated forces. We'll stick a, we'll stick a couple moments on it. And once again, the moments really don't matter. And we'll throw a distributed load on top of the whole thing. So this is a complete mess. But that's not really what we're going to be looking at. I want to take a look at a small section of it. So we're just going to look at this little small section here in red. And that's going to be our dx. So differential element in the x direction. And it's going to be at some distance here, x, as we're going down. So I just want to take a look at this small section now. Let's do a free body diagram of what's going on in this section. So if I take that and blow that up, here's my little section. It's got a width of dx. It's got a height of, I think we're going to use h for that. But let's not really worry about that now. So what do we have going on? Even with all these crazy things, we're going to have a couple of things that will be happening in this is we're going to have stresses. And so stresses are force densities and they're going to be based around, we'll just say this is the neutral axis. And so we'll say in this case that we have uh, compression on the top, tension on the bottom, and that will be from the entire combination loading. So if I have tension on the bottom, Stress is going to look like this, because remember, it comes to zero when we get to our neutral axis. And so it's going to increase out to the maximum. And then up here, if this is our compressive stress, we're going to be at the same thing. And we're going to come down where it's going to be compressing in. Now, as we look at this, we have to remember that we have to make sure that the sum of all forces in the x direction are going to be satisfied. So all of this here is that force that's being done over the area. So that's all going to be applied by some differential element of force. We'll call that DF. And then it's going to be opposed. We'll call this DF prime. And then we have the same thing on the bottom. Compressing on the top, expanding on the bottom. So we'll have some force DF prime here and some force DF here. So that is all works out, all balances out. So the sum of the forces in the x direction have to be zero. Now we also have a moment that's being applied on either side because we're cutting this in the middle just like we did with our shear moment diagram. So we have some moment here and it's being opposed on the other side by some moment. But as we know, the moment is going to change as we go along. So we're going to say that we have a moment on this side is just the moment. And then we have the moment on this side plus some differential element of moment. Okay. So now what we want to look at is we're going to break this down even further. Because what I want to look at is I want to think about how much shear stress is in any part on this beam, but horizontally instead of vertically. So now we're going to assume that this has a, a thickness of T into the whiteboard or into the screen. So what I want to do is at any point on here, and it doesn't matter where we're going to do it because we're going to take a look at it, we're going to take a cut. And the reason I'm going to do that cut is once again, so just like we went to a free body diagram here, I'm going to draw a new free body diagram here. And so now I'm just looking at the cut. So here's my neutral axis. And we had a piece here, but we've cut it to the bottom. And so there's the top of, of our little section of the beam here. So now we still have 
that normal stress pushing on it. Notice it doesn't go to zero here because our neutral axis is where it's zero. So we still have all that stress here. So we'll call uh, we'll call this side stress and this side stress prime just to distinguish between the two sides. And I still am going to have, you know, there's the moment on this side and there's the moment plus the differential element of moment on that side. But we get into this situation just like when we're doing internal loading, internal torquing and all that. Since I've cut it here, there's got to be some kind of internal force here that's going to balance everything out. And so this is a shear force because it's going along in the planes. And so we're looking at the beam now, and we're going to have to calculate out what that internal shear force is. Now we're going to give this some height, which we'll call y from the neutral axis so we can um, calculate things out. In fact, let's call it y prime to distinguish it from the certain y's that we would use within, you know, normal bending and whatnot. So this will change depending on where we're looking at it, where we set this y prime to be. So the, and we'll talk about how it, uh, the intensity of how it varies a little bit later. So the horizontal shear stress is going to be different right near the neutral axis than it would be towards the outside of things. Okay, just a little bit of magic there because I wanted a little bit more room to talk, so I've just, or to draw, so I've moved just uh, the last image that we were working on. So there is, before we get to talking about the forces, there is one other thing that I want to define. And so now, because we've done this little section, and if I look at this, this is not the full length of sl uh, slice of the beam anymore. So I can't really say the area is the full slice of the beam. So if I look at just the area here, so just this area above the cut, we're going to we're going to denote that as a prime. Now we've got a prime on both sides because it's the exact same area on both of these. Now it's an important distinction that we notice this A prime because we're going to be dealing with some different things dealing with this area. This is actually going to end up probably being the more confusing part of this, but once we work through it, you'll see it's, it's actually not that bad. So what I want to do is I want to do a force balance in the X direction. So I want to take and sum up all those forces in the x direction and we're going to say to the left is positive. So if I look at this these all have to equal zero. So what do I do? The first thing I look at is I've got this sigma prime here. Now sigma prime to get it to a force I'm going to multiply it by its area so sigma prime times area prime sorry, not times area prime, but I want to integrate this over the area because right now I want to make this as general as I can. Now that's operating in the negative direction, so we're going to say that's minus. And then on the other side I've got the same thing, so I'm going to integrate over the area, not a1, a prime of sigma da prime. And so then the last thing I have is I have the I have the shear stress moving in that negative direction also, so minus the shear stress. Now, we have to deal with the area over which the shear stress acts. So one, we've already said that this slice is going to be dx thick, so that's going to be dx, actually let's write that over here, but we've also said that into the board the thickness of this is t, so T, the thickness in the board, times DX will give us that area over which it is operating. Okay, so now we know the stress is caused by bending. So let's step away from this right now, and we'll actually go back and remember what is stress. Well, stress is going to be M times Y divided by I. 
And now we're going to plug that into our equation. So we're going to come back up here. So we still got zero is equal to. Now I want to start with this guy here who is on this side. And so what I'm going to have is I'm still going to be integrating over the area prime. The moment, the value of the moment on this side is moment plus the D, the differential element of the moment. I'm going to divide that by the area. We're going to multiply that by Y. This Y is different than Y prime. Y prime is up to where the cut is. This Y is any spot up here that we look at because this is where we're calculating out stress. And we're going to integrate that over DA prime. We'll do the same thing here. So we're going to subtract from that this force on this side, which is just the moment. Moment divided by I, Y, D, A prime. And then we're still left with the minus tau T, D, X. And so there's our equation. Now, as we look at a couple things, we can see that this is a positive M, Y, I, D, A. This is a negative one. So we're going to be able to cancel out part of our stuff basically that is going to cancel all that out so what we're going to be left with is just this equation that we've got displayed now so what do we do well let's pull out the constants first of this first guy here so dm over i so the differential of the moment the area or excuse me the moment of inertia depend nothing on the area which is what we're calculating here. So we can pull that out. And so we can say that dm over i times the integration over the area of y da prime. And then we're going to move the tau to the other side. So t dx. And so now we're going to rewrite this. We're going to solve this for tau. And what we're going to end up with is tau is going to be 1 over i, moment of inertia, times our thickness. And then we're going to have the change of moment with respect to x. And then we're going to be looking at the integration over a prime, y prime, da prime. Okay, so now... We're getting somewhere. We've at least got the formulation of the horizontal shear stress, but we need to simplify this a little bit. There's some things that we can do to make it a little bit easier, and we'll take care of that in the next part of the video.